Okay, here is my MS Paint tutorial. Um, so this, so I do own a tablet. Um, I have a uh, Wacom Bamboo Capture uh, Pen and Touch. Um, so I do have a bamboo, but this is just something you know that goes to show you don't need a fancy art program to do really cool looking art. So the first thing I do is um, I sketch out what I want to draw in a different color from my line art color. Um, since I normally uh, do line art in black because that's pretty much the standard, um, I go in with gray. So I do all my sketching in gray. I do just I erase with the white tool and I uh, color in or I sketch out with the pencil tool in a gray. Um, so, MS Paint now has all these fancy tools, it's got a paintbrush, it's got an airbrush, it's gonna... Ignore all that. The only thing you want is the pencil brush, um, and maybe some of the shaping tools. Like, when I was doing the larger bones, I was using the shaping tools to make um, the, the top of the bones, and then even here I'm using them to make the straight lines because... Heaven to Betsy, I don't want to do straight lines. Straight lines are not my friend. Okay, like, see here I'm doing the background, <laughs> the background, um, with the cityscape, and my lines are all over the place, but it's the background, it doesn't matter a whole lot. And here I'm finally, um, again, there's four sizes. To the pencil tool and if you're anything like me you're gonna want to vary it um, something that's just part of my style is that I have um, really varying line weight so what I'll go through is I'll choose one or two sizes that I stick to like a, the second one down or the third one down and I'll just go through and I'll make lines thicker in different places usually I won't go any thinner than this but I'll make it th thicker in different places um, I'm actually really pl proud of these pants because of the folds. Clothing is just like really hard for me to draw. So having the, the clothing actually stretch uh, semi-realistically is nice for me. Okay, like again here I come in with the really thin lines to do my more detailed work. Um, something you might find out with the thinner lines though is that you'll end up with um, gaps that aren't going to be filled in right when you go through and you erase. Um, so you actually kind of want to be careful with thinner lines. Um, nothing too terrible. I mean you can go complex if you want to take all the time to do that. Um, I think I spent I think I spent two hours uh, doing this in total. Now that doesn't that doesn't count for the sketch. The sketch only took like 10 minutes or something. Probably not even that. I don't know. I wasn't recording. <laughs> um, okay, now I'm going in with the more detailed work. The face, the bones. Okay. And now, in order to... Okay, this is going to be a neat trick. In order to get rid of all the sketch lines, you fill in all the in-between spaces with that same color that you sketched in. And then... Ta-da! Then you fill in all everything with white. And you might have to do this two or three times just to get everything filled in uh, white and get rid of all the sketch, sketch, but you bucket tool in with your sketch color and then you bucket tool in with white. Bucket tool, ske tool sketch, bucket tool white, bucket tool sketch, bucket tool white. Just back and forth. And you'll be able to get rid of most of your uh, sketch lines. Um, every once in a while you'll see, like, a, there's like two or three pixels that didn't get fully colored in. I just kind of go over those with black, <laughs> my, my line art layer, because my style is already, um, my style is already pretty, uh, varied. So what's a couple more lines? It doesn't matter. Okay. Now here is pretty easy. You just fill in, <laughs> fill in your colors. Um, again, pretty easy. Just choose a color, uh, fill it in that shade, do whatever. 
Okay, now, um, something that is just a standard that I don't do is I rarely fill in actual thing, like characters or stuff that's in the foreground. I rarely fill anything in with actual black. True blue blacks or true, true blue, true blacks or true grays, um, because I, it doesn't, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't look right. Um, even just existing in nature, if you look, if you like take a photograph and like you color select it, it's not going to be true black. It's going to be, sh have a little bit of a blue or a little bit of red or orange, something kind of hue into it. Um, now something that is really cool that I found out is that outdoor shadows are blue. They have a blue tint to them on a sunny day. Interesting, right? Okay. So here I'm filling in darker colors first. Well, not darker, but like mid-tone colors first. Um, now I'm going in with just um, where the light's going to be hitting. So I want his hand to be glowing. So the light is coming across and you can see where it reflects from his hand. And it's also kind of reflecting off the bones. I'm not the best at figuring out where light comes from, but I'm just filling in... Um, areas and they have to be closed lines. Filling in the areas I want different patches of the cell shading to be and then filling in, in with the bucket tool. Um, the same goes for the shadows so I'm still still doing yeah I decided to not go with that. And then uh, here I'm doing some more highlights just in a couple random places so they add a little bit of depth so like the buttons on his his uh, jacket um, and then I'm filling in oh here I'm finally filling in actual highlights so again I'm <laughs> I'm uh, just filling in areas or tracing around areas that I want to be colored and then bucket tooling in um, the reason I do the, like the little sketchy lines on the uh, color of his shirt there is just because um, that's kind of sort of to indicate a softer shadow. Um, I think it's or a softer lighting effect. Um, it's just a personal thing. You really don't have to do that. Okay, but yeah, just kind of filling in different patches of lights and darks. Um, and here I'm filling in, now just color over everything, like don't worry about the rest of your stuff when you're doing effects like this, um, because you can bucket tool in your line art layer since the, the color is already crossing that black, it won't harm the rest of your line art. Um, so here I'm just, you know, color selecting what looks like it's going, if it's going over a lighter area, then the, the ectoplasm, whatever the magic is, going to be a lighter color. If it's going over a darker area, obviously it's going to be a little bit darker because it's like translucent. So all that aside, and then I'm adding, I'm figuring out where uh, the actual light would be. Now I needed to have my light source figured out so that I could come in and do this. And again, the softer shadows up top, I'm just kind of sketching in a lot of random lines. And finally, I can fill in the bones. There we go. Those are filled in, that's nice. Okay, and the water. So I, I was watching some painting videos and I really liked how um, the the cityscape kind of reflected onto the water, so I just kind of did that by a bunch of um, kind of semi off kilter horizontal lines to be the reflection in the water. Um, now, I live in Seattle, so <laughs> that's the only cityscape that I really know of, so um, here we have the Space Needle just just because. <laughs> um, this um, I'm doing a bunch of uh, just horizontal lines, and those are going to be the the, li the lights in the buildings themselves. Now I go back and I erase some of them because some of them just kind of look kind of wonky. And then down here I'm doing the street, so it's going to be a bunch of red tail lights, 
and yellow um, headlights. And those two are reflecting in the water. And they're gonna be, like, if you look at a photograph, they, like, reflect on for a distance. And I, I don't really know how to explain it. And here I'm kind of doing, um, some sea foam. So, just kind of some white lines, and it's closer to the viewer, so it's gonna be a little bit of the sea foam. I think it looks pretty cool. Okay, and here I'm just adjusting the colors because they didn't didn't quite look right. So again, with bucket tools, it's really nice. You can just go through and adjust all of your colors. Now I'm adding a little bit more detail to the bones just because I thought it would look better. Um, I don't usually do that actually. I just kind of leave them as is because I figure they're like um, a entity of themselves, a light source. But here I did that just because I went through and, or just because I have the black line art on it, I thought it would look better. Um, on some of my other ones, I just, I don't do any line art and I just have the colors as is. But here I did have the black line art, so I just wanted to add a little more depth to them. Okay, here I'm just adding some, um, some lines to the, sh to the sky to kind of make it look like the city lights are um, lighting up the sky. And a couple of stars, not too many because again this is the city and having lived in the city basically my whole- I live in the middle of the woods now just outside of Seattle but having lived in the city most of my life I know that you don't see a bunch of stars. And here's the moon! Yay moon. Um, I think that pretty much covers it though so I'm going to let this just run.